Hey friends, she is Med here, and today we're talking about MSR, or MSAR, whatever you call it, but it stands for the Medical School Admission Requirements. So if you're interested, keep watching. All right, so this is the main page for MSAR. This gives a brief background about MSAR. It's an online database where pre-medical students have the option to narrow down their medical school search. It allows you to compare schools and if you are interested just know the subscription costs money and I know it sucks but you know this process is expensive so you decide which expenses you want to take on. A two-year subscription for MSAR is $36 and a one-year subscription is $28. I went with the two-year subscription I believe because I still have access to it now. If you're still on the fence keep watching this video and by the end I hope you decide whether you will would like to invest in this or not. $20 or $36 is still some money that you could use towards other expenses, so you know what's best for you, but hopefully this video helps. Before I sign into MSAR under my account, I wanna show you what it looks like under guest. Even if you decide not to purchase MSAR, which is totally fine, you can still utilize it to your advantage. You're still able to put location to states or countries like Canada, there's also an option here. You can click if they accept out-of-state persons or persons just from the US or even international if you're from anywhere outside of the US and even Canada. So those are options you can still click under guest view. One of the things you can't view under guest view is medium MCAT or medium GPA. Other things you can change are the deadlines. Usually medical school deadlines for secondaries are in October, November, or December, but I encourage you always to submit your application early and be thorough as possible. Combined degree programs such as BS, MD, I don't think that applies to most students unless you're already attending an institution with this program in place and you've already applied through that. But other combined degree programs, MD, JD, MBA, MPH, or PhD. So for the medical scientists out there. For class size, you can definitely navigate different class sizes and it actually filters the schools for you. You can click public or private schools and it filters as you go, which is wonderful. And then for campus type, you can click urban, suburban, rural, and notice that it filters as you go. So it automatically adjusts. So you don't have to click enter each time you set a filter. But also under guest view, you see a lot of information. Some things that are crossed out are things about interview information. So if that interview style is open or closed or multiple mini styled interviews or group interviews. So that information is not available to you if you're still under guest mode and a lot of other information such as what their selection criteria is or required pre-medical work. So I'll show you what that looks like. GPA data, MCAT data, you can't see under guest view. But you can definitely see that when you go to the actual medical school's website, but you just have to do digging. MSAR is just a wonderful tool to condense all these searches you would do individually into one program. So let's sign in. All right, we're in. So we're just gonna go through the filters as if I were applying to medical school disciple. I just wanna let you guys know that I've already applied to medical school and been accepted to multiple schools. So this is just to show you how I use MSAR to my advantage. For one, I clicked United States and then towards the middle of my search, I actually put specific states because I realized I wouldn't want to live in certain parts of the country just based on preference because location matters to me. And for accepts applicants, I chose out of state and US because those two options apply to me. For medium MCAT, put your dream score or your realistic score, whichever score you had on the MCAT, you make sure that you're competitive in these ranges. So let's say you scored a 505, maybe you'd be competitive in these ranges right here. But if you score it higher, then you could you can even like leave your range this big. But again, if I left my range this big, there would be 14 pages to navigate and I wasn't interested in doing that. So I just narrowed down my search to around this. For medium GPA, again, you can leave it as broad as this if you wanna cast your net wide. But again, there's 11 searches here. I did not wanna go through 11 searches. Maybe I did at one point, but I realized it was not realistic, so yeah, I left it around this median GPA, which I know I was gonna be competitive, this MCAT range and then this GPA range. For application deadline, I didn't really put anything for this because I set a personal goal for submitting all my secondaries by late July or early August, and that's just because I wanna be ahead of the game. And in my mind, I'll be a part of the first pool to be interviewed and 
that's always a good thing to get an interview at least so you don't have to worry about playing the waiting game for too long. Combined degree programs, the BSMD option will not apply to most students applying for medical school this cycle because if you are in a BSMD program, you've already applied through that maybe in high school or during your first year of college. If you're interested in getting a JD or MBA or MPH or being a medical scientist, then you can filter schools based on that. But I just left it broad. Class size. So what are you interested in? Are you interested in a small class size where you get to know every person in your class by the first, middle, and last name, you know their specialty interests, you know their hobbies outside of school. That's what I've noticed with some of the schools that I've interviewed at with class sizes of like 50 or 60 or something. I've never interviewed at a school that has a class size of 500. I'm not sure if that's even a real thing. I'm comfortable in a class size that ranges up to like 200. Yeah, okay, 199 is fine. 40 is a little small for me, but it, it doesn't matter, maybe 50. 49 will do. For school type on MSAR, I just applied to private schools. The only public medical schools I applied to were through the Texas application service called TMDSAS, where the majority of the Texas medical schools are listed. And if you want a video or more information on that, I can do a video about that. But if you just want some quick notes about it, definitely check out my Instagram at sheismed underscore. And then for campus type, I went with urban and I also settled for suburban as well. I know I want to live in a city, but if you're wanting to live in rural areas, then definitely click rural. I just know that I'm not, that's not what I'm interested in. So now my search is narrowed down to three pages. And again, I see my filters at the very top of the screen. Everything looks right. So these are all schools I would be competitive at. And these are a lot of the schools I applied to actually. And I received a great deal of interviews from them. So let's just go through Albert Einstein College of Medicine because it's just first of the list. All right, so these are the types of things you'll see if you have a subscription to MSAR. You'll see everything on the page that was blurred out for guest view. You would see the mission statement and general information about the school. Again, you can find these things on the actual school's website, but you'll have to do digging. MSAR provides the convenience of having it all in one place for multiple medical schools, hence it being an online database. So when I would search on MSAR, what I would look for are specific things. I mean, I would, I would dig through the whole page to be honest, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna look for key things. So I'll look at recommendation letters. So they require at least two, maximum of five, but my school does committee letters. So it's good to know that they prefer committee letters. So if your school has a pre-health committee and they offer the committee letter, definitely go for it. Cause if you don't do the committee letter and they know that your school, like medical schools know that your institution provides a committee letter, they're gonna ask you why you didn't do that. So just save the trouble and go with the committee letter if it's available. Also, it tells you how much the secondary application fees are. So some schools don't require secondary, so it's zero dollars. And then some schools can charge up to 120, 125. I think that's the, the largest amount I've seen for a secondary application. So every step of this process I've noticed co costs something from submitting your primary application to submitting your secondary application to getting an interview and having to pay for the ticket there and having to pay for lodging and food. So this is a really expensive process. So when it comes to applying to medical school, you really wanna narrow down your search to schools that you actually see yourself in. Sometimes you wanna cast your net super wide, but just know that if you do that, you might get a lot of interviews, you might not. Regardless, you're gonna spend a lot of money if you do that. The school has an early decision program. What this means is that if you apply through the early decision program and you're accepted, then you are bound to attend this medical school. Now the school knows that they're investing time in you and if you do get accepted, they're gonna know that you're gonna choose them. So it's a binding acceptance. So let's say you're from the Bronx and you wanna stay home, you wanna stay near your family, you wanna practice in a community that you grew up in, early decision might be an option for you. If you're not interested in early decision programs and want a wide variety of acceptances where you can choose where you wanna go, then you wouldn't choose early decision program. For me, I didn't choose early decision program for any of the medical schools I applied to. So this class size is 183. Ask yourself, is this too big or is it reasonable? To me, 183 is totally fine. The latest MCAT that I'll take is September 1st, 2020. That's if you're applying for the fall 2021 cycle. The oldest they'll consider is January 2017. So MSAR also provides an application kind of timeline for you. It just helps me stay organized and having this timeline made it easier for me to make my own timeline without searching the different schools. This is acceptance information. So this is past interviews. So when I talk about medical school interviews, I'll talk more about when to 
expect acceptances. But just going Albert Einstein, the earliest that they'll send an acceptance is February 1st of 2021. That's for the fall 2021 cycle. And the latest is August 9th. So I wonder when they start medical school, because if it's July, that wouldn't make sense. So they definitely start medical school in August. Their deposit is $100. This is an amount that the institution expects you to pay if you want to reserve your seat. Some schools will refund the deposit if you decide not to attend that institution, and then other schools will keep your deposit. So for example, let's say it's February 1st, you receive an acceptance from Albert Einstein, you are elated, you're excited, you now feel confident because now you're going to be a future doctor. Great. But they say that you need to put a deposit of $100 and they tell you it's non-refundable. So what do you do? You think to yourself and then you look at the deadline, which is April 30th, and then you realize you have time to still decide whether you want to go to the school and put in that deposit. And by the time April 30th comes about, you might hear from other schools about different acceptances and different scholarship offers. So now you have leverage on where you want to go based on acceptances and based on scholarship offers. So then you can decide closer to April 30th where you want to put your deposit in, especially if the school's not refundable. This is about waitlist information. So this pertains to people who've interviewed but put on the waitlist. This is just on average. This doesn't happen every year. I'm not sure which year this happened, but just know that these numbers can fluctuate. It's not set in stone. This is selection criteria, selection factors. You can definitely find more of this information on the actual medical school's website, but if you just want something condensed, MSAR does a great job at that. And what I really Really liked about MSAR are all these graphs. I would always look at pre-medical experience. So what does the matriculating class experience look like? I'll also look at required coursework. So let's say you AP'd out of introductory biology. Do they accept AP? Yes. There's a caveat to this. They expect you to take upper level biology courses. So even if you AP out of like maybe introductory biology or introductory chemistry, always take upper level versions of those courses just to show that you're competent and will excel at the collegiate level. They also accept online community college. So if those things apply to you, then you're good. I also like this tool where I could see acceptance data. I would usually look at all matriculated students, but they have options for in-state, out-of-state, and all accepted students nationally, but, but to me, I would always choose this option. 515 is the medium MCAT score for the matriculating students. That upper 90th percentile scored around 519, lower 10th percentile accepted students were around a 510. So I'd definitely be competitive in this range. They also do score breakdowns by section test. But it's nice, you can just change these filters and see what the different graphs look like, and you can just see if you're competitive here, and if you should apply to the school. So that's what I liked a lot about MSAR. It just helped me narrow down my list of schools to find out where I'm competitive. This is more data, matriculant demographics. I'd also look at their race and ethnicity chart um, just to see if the school is making active strides to increase diversity at their institution. I like how it shows you the school's data from 2016 to 2019. It should update by next year, I believe, but it, it just gives you a gauge of how the matriculant class will look like. More data you can look at. You can, so you can see the matriculants from Albert Einstein are from all over the US, which is nice. Not just from the Northeast, but even from the West Coast and then Southeast as well. All right, let's scroll down. So I'd also look at the match list, but I realized that I could definitely find that on the medical school's website. Let's see how recent this is. This is from 2019. All right, let's go on the actual website where it gives you a more detailed list of where the students match to. So. I was looking at the match list to see where are the students matching, are they staying local, are they staying in the same region, or are they going all over the United States? That's one of the factors I would look into. This is for example. Education and research, you can find more information about the curriculum on the website and I recommend that you do, but just to find a condensed version, you can see that on MSAR. Another thing I would look at is tuition aid and debt. 68% of the class receives some sort of aid. This one is not available at this time, so I would definitely look that up because I'm curious to see what the average debt looks like for people who graduate from this medical school. If this number is super high, it would kind of deter me because I don't want to be in a lot of debt when I graduate medical school and I want to show that the institution is, you know, investing in their students by providing aid. Campus life, I definitely go on the actual website of the medical school to see this stuff, but in brief, MSAR does a great job at condensing the list for you. All right, so let's go back to my search results. And now for the list of medical schools I applied to. So I'll give you some of the medical schools that I applied to. So again, out of Okay, these are 22. So I think I applied to like maybe 10 out of these schools. I didn't apply to all of these medical schools, but I definitely received an interview from Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Incan School of Medicine, Keck School of Medicine, 
Mayo Clinic, a like school of medicine, the Arizona campus, I applied to that specific campus. NYU, when it was Lagoon, <laughs> but I changed to Gerson. I received an interview from Northwestern, Vanderbilt, Wild Cornell, and yes, that's it from this list. So those are some of the medical schools I applied to using AMCAS, but I definitely applied to a couple more using AMCAS. I don't know why they're not showing up now. I applied to maybe three or four schools using TMDSAS, which is the Texas Medical School Application Service. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please comment them below or you can feel free to private message me. Also make sure to check out my Instagram at sheismed underscore to find more information about my pre-medical journey because I'm on there a little bit more and I'll be starting my medical school journey this summer, summer 2020, so I can't wait to share that with you. But until then, I wish you guys the best of luck with this application cycle. Hope everything works out at the end. But until next time, she's med.